So who is Simon McIntyre? Uh, God, that's such a uh, big question. Um, I guess I would start with, um, I guess, my family sort of upbringing, um, being a massive part of that. Um, you know, I was very fortunate. My, um, my parents r raised me to come up with a, a very strong sense of who I am, um, where I come from, um, and also just the family values that were instilled in them and, you know, what, what it means to, you know, be a person of you know that's conscious and and you know wants to sort of deliver in sort of the community and and whatever um you know my my dad used to take me back to he's from trinidad and tobago in the caribbean he used to take me there every year um and you know allow me to see like his humble beginnings um and you know that really sat really well with me because from a young age, I saw that, you know, not everything is given to you, you have to work for it. And, you know, my parents, you know, working the jobs that they did, you know, my my mum was away, like working a lot when I was young. And, you know, I'm really grateful for what she was able to provide for me and my, my brother and sister. So I guess it starts there. Um, and, you know, leading from that, it was, you know, from a young age, I, I was really struck with sports. I was very energetic, loved playing football, um, loved playing uh, cricket as well, being from the Caribbean. And then, you know, rugby was sort of the, the last one that I sort of took up and, you know, just, it was like hand to glove, I guess. Um, really loved the, you know, the physicality, the, the way I was able to express myself um, on the pitch and, you know, something that I fell in love with very quickly. Um, you know, it, you know, also showed me, you know, uh, taught me a lot in terms of, you know, values and teamwork and the uh, wanting to, you know, be a part of a team and, you know, drove a winning philosophy within me that I'm, you know, I wanted to win and, but also to bring other people with me. Um, also showed me like quite a, you know, ugly side of, of life as well, um, playing at a young age in some of the areas that I did, you know, I was, you know, racially abused at, at times when I was young from uh, kids to parents, which was, you know, something quite um, extraordinary. But, you know, when, you know, you look at the times now, a lot of things has, has changed and improved a lot, but there's still a lot of room for improvement and a, a lot of, um, work still to be done sort of in in you know rugby and, and wider society as a as a whole um and then yeah the, but those those experiences you know have helped shape me to be the man i am today and i'm very grateful for everything that i've been able to experience and come through because that's built the resilience that i have uh, to deal with certain you know setbacks and um, things that might necessarily be, you know, you know, tough for me to deal with, but through what I've come through, it gives me a lot of confidence and strength to be able to, you know, deal with those sorts of aspects of life that, you know, unexpected that are chucked at you. Yeah, definitely. And, and until you've lived through those experiences like, like you have, you'd never understand that, would you? So you spoke about the upbringing in Trinidad, yeah. the time you spent there, and then going through that racial abuse as a young person. And you spoke about the importance of perspective. So how did that, how did that impact you as a young person and give you that perspective? And I know you actively practice gratitude daily. So how, how important do you feel like that is? I think, the, um, I think what really sort of struck with me was... Um, I I love being able to tell people that I was from Trinidad. Like my parents are from Trinidad. I'm Trinidadian as a as a kid. Like I, you know, I took to the culture like so so much, and it was a part of me. Um, you know, a part of daily life. Like my, you know, reinforced like through my dad with music, um, which is another thing that I'm very passionate about. But it was just constantly not drilled into me because it uh, sounds a bit militant it was impressed on me as a from a very young age that my identity is something that i should be proud of 
um, as something that I should, you know, you know, be outwardly, you know, um, expressive of it. So in terms of it being uh, profound in, in terms of those situations that I was able to um, deal with it, you know, I think racism is something that, you know, very negatively affects uh, black people, which, you know, is very obvious to say, but it's traumatizing. Um, but what I've uh, been fortunate to, to find is that, you know, I'm, I'm hurt by racism, but it doesn't, it, I'm not traumatized by it because of this strong sense of identity and this um, feeling that, you know, I'm proud to be who I am and no one can take that away from me. Um, and I wouldn't want anybody to try and take that away from me. So that, that for me is like a, an armor against that, I guess. Yeah. And you've clearly got a very strong sense of self and you're incredibly self-aware. And you spoke about those values that from a very young age were impressioned upon you. Could you speak about what some of those values are and why they're important to you? Um, I think the, um, I, think, I think to start off with probably authenticity is like very important to me. Um, be authentic to who you are as a person and um, not try to be pigeonholed into certain categories that people might want to try and put you in, on. So in terms of like being self-aware, I guess as a, as a thing, it's, it's, it's more understanding that my identity is who I am. And then how, do, how does the outside environment sort of affect me and how does it affect the other people around me and how do I sort of fit into, fit into all of that? Um, I try to, like you, like you alluded to, I, I try to practice gratitude every day because, you know, I've, like I've, I've said before, there's been setbacks that I've had in my life, um, you know, f taking me away. Like, like, obviously, the big obvious one with rugby is injury. Um, you know, I've had my share of injuries that have taken it away from me. And in those moments, you know, you get caught up in, you know, the physical aspects of injuries and you don't really think too much about not in terms of mental health as a as a as a thing um which is spoken about a lot but in terms of well how does this how do I reflect how can I grow from this experience how do I change my mindset from being in this place where I'm I'm not playing rugby but what where, where is it that I can grow to without being able to do the physical things that you know we do on a day-to-day -day basis so through that, I think, um, you know, having long injury layoffs in the past, it then took me to a journey of, well, if I'm not on the rugby pitch, then what is it that I'm doing? Um, you know, this isn't going to last forever. So who am I away from this? And then I began to ask myself questions about what, what where I sat with that and how... Um, how I sort of looked at my life and how my how my life has changed because rug, rugby is, you know, it's a 24 seven job. Obviously we train in the day, we have time off to rest and recover, but you never switched off from it. You can't take time off. And a lot of, a, a lot of our decisions are governed by the fact that we play rugby. So, you know, what choices we make when we eat, what time we decide to go to bed, you know, shall I go out and meet my friends or what time are they going to, you know, what time I'll stay up till, you know, those, all those questions all go back to rugby and what is best for my rugby career. So in terms of that being a consuming aspect to it, I felt like my life was all 24 seven geared towards rugby. And as, as much as you feel as though, or logic will tell you that that is how you need to be in order to be successful, what I began to discover, you know, through conversations with other people, you know, I've, I'm very fortunate to have a lot of very um, uh, good friends that I've been able to talk through stuff and sort of draw from their experience rather than just, you know, having to experience everything myself. Um, I began to, you know, have these conversations that sort of got me to switching from my mindset of rugby, rugby, rugby and, you know, nothing else can sort of get in the way of that to, okay, how can I expand my mind? How can I compartmentalize rugby um, into the hours that I need to? Um, and then have something else that sort of 
takes my mind away. So, um, you know, we've spoken about mindfulness and meditation. You know, I was introduced to meditation a few years ago. Um, and it just started off as, you know, 10, 15 minutes a day to sort of reflect. And I think that as a beginning point then led to, you know, sort of when I have conversations now and I listen to what people say, I'm not reacting to what they're saying straight away. I'm internalizing it, seeing where that sits with me. And then I'm able to respond with a bit more thought rather than reacting to what people say, which has actually improved a lot of my, um, you know, conversations in rugby, like in terms of receiving feedback, you know, sometimes you don't hear everything you want to hear from a coach, but it's seeing how that sits with it and re being able to reframe um, conversations so that, you know, seeing the positive side of, of the way things are said um, and also choosing to not feel that negative sort of, you know, fixed mindset of, oh, well, he's wrong. You know, actually trying to take some constructive um, parts of people's conversations is, you know, something that I think is, it comes with maturity, definitely, but it's also um, from me spending time with myself is <laughs> as weird as that sort of sounds, but it's, I, I find that it actually allows me to be able to um, express myself more clearly and also I'm able to um, control my feelings a lot more and in and then from that being intentional in my actions when I, on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah and you mentioned uh, your, your father growing up and how influential he was and then you mentioned those people in your life who help you to get to the point where you are now. How important do you feel it is to have a mentor or mentors within your life as a young person. Yeah, I think I think mentors is the is the right uh, word. Um, it you know it takes a village to to raise someone. Um, you know, I could you know if I really sat down and thought about, it, I could think of you know uh, loads of people that have had profound influences on my life. You know, even negative for the negative, which you learn from in, in, in versing and, and you're able, when you're able to sit with sort of experiences you've had, you realize that those experiences have prepared you for dealing with another confrontation or something else that you've had. So um, I, I, was, I was lucky that, you know, uh, you know my, my, my dad is such a massive influence in my life and, you know, going to all the, you know, various like, training sessions games and stuff with my dad my dad always used to take me and we used to have conversations the whole time and you know learning about how he got to where is and sort of the feedback he would give me you know that was that was something that was massive you know I've, i see i look at the the roles um that my junior rugby club had in my rugby career i wouldn't play rugby if it, if it wasn't for them i learned all my rugby at junior Rugby, shout out to Brown Park if anyone's watching. Um, and that had such a, a, a profound experience, um, impression on me and it made me fall in love with the game. And I just think that there's there's so much that rugby can give to, to people. Um, I've certainly benefited from it. Um, I think we have a real, um, um, a real job to do um, in rugby to get it out to more people. Um, and spread the sort of um, the word and uh, on rugby and not make it so insular as I feel like it is. It's not. It's it's not accessible to enough people. Um, and if and in terms of teaching values and you know having you know just if anything a positive um, you know effect for a few hours from people's lives. I think. It's such it's such a great vehicle in order to do, to teach so many lessons to, to young children and and also um, you know in in terms of a community sense. Yeah, and you can see that the impact that those mentors have had on your life and the person you've become and and your one of your values is to to give back to give to the community. The lessons you've learned throughout your life, you can then help people with those lessons and how important is that to you then, Si, that 
that working within the community and giving back to the community that you just alluded to there? Yeah, I think the you know in terms of um, what I've said about in terms of having these like being able to reflect on a lot of things that I've I've gone through and I feel like I have a responsibility to share those um, experiences. Um, not just the negative ones, but the positive ones as well. And in terms of like, you know, I, I, I reflect back to, you know, coming up and playing um, rugby, like, you know, the, the team that I played in, a lot of, um, a lot of people sort of felt slip through the cracks. Uh, I wonder what, I always used to wonder what, why is it that they've not been able to get the opportunities that I have or, you know, why is it that it was me that was that was able to do that? And, you know, looking back to, or thinking back to what you were saying about mentors being a massive role, just take some, just somebody just to step out and say, you know, a word of encouragement or, you know, having, or, you know, being there to, you know, just ask a question of, you know, are you all right? Like, do you, like encouraging people when they need it. In, and, you know, for me, that might seem very small and, and not a significant thing to do, but who knows what kind of impact you can have as a person on somebody else if you just show that you care to them, especially a child. Like, you know, at, at young ages, you don't know what um, what they're going through and what they're hiding and whatever. It's, I think it's just such a massive thing to just be able to, reach out to people and just show that you're actually taking a vested interest in them. Um, and, you know, I think that sort of philosophy that I've had now um, in sort of my immediate sort of circles with people, that can be replicated out into a community sense. And, you know, I think it's such a massive thing for, um, you know, um, these sorts of programs that we have to reflect the people that it's trying to serve because you know, uh, I I can, you know, I, I can look at when I came to like my first Sale Sharks game and saw Jason Robinson playing, like seeing somebody that reflected a part of me was such a massive thing for me. So if that's what that can do, then what if we bring it a bit closer to like a community um, outreach and 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 those sorts of things, and including myself going into the community, what kind of effect can I have on young people or or the community if 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 those sorts of if I'm if I'm giving back to those those people.